Chef David Shalek has cooked for over two decades in New York, San Francisco, and the Napa Valley. He's also a television culinary producer, having worked alongside celebrated hosts Jack Pepin, Joanne Weir, Jose Andres, and with Kat Cora on the Food Network's Iron Chef America. Early in his career, David spent five years doing internships in the kitchens of France and Italy's greatest restaurants, before taking an offer to become a chef on board an Italian sailing yacht based in the French Riviera. The extended trip abroad, including a handful of seasons at sea, led to the publication of David's acclaimed book, Mediterranean Summer, a culinary travel memoir with a unique view. The book takes place on the uh, private yacht that I cooked on when I lived overseas. It's my first chef's job and uh, what's really important is that is the word chef because the story is really about stepping up and, and taking ownership of something. I had gone abroad originally to, to find out what transforms one into, from being a cook into a chef and, and the job on the yacht I think gave me that opportunity. The yacht that I worked on is a gorgeous 126 foot classic schooner. She was built in 1930. The owners that I worked for had her restored before our first season, so everything was shining and, and glistening. A lot of gorgeous mahogany, varnished wood, brass, teak, new lines. She'd been sailing the Mediterranean and Caribbean for decades, and uh, once she was acquired by my bosses, they decided to keep her in the Mediterranean. Our itinerary was great. Um, the standard thing, I'd worked on this yacht for a few seasons, and uh, the, the, standard, the standard itinerary uh, was, well, we were based in Antibes, which is between Cannes and Nice, and Antibes is a very big yacht harbor, a uh, very important yacht harbor. And we would start the season in, in the Riviera uh, for a few weekends in Saint-Tropez or Cannes, uh, Villefranche, and uh, then at the um, Monaco Grand Prix, that was pretty much the start of the yachting season, so it was a big weekend in Monte Carlo, and then after that we'd make our way every weekend, uh, we'd go into Italy, and make our way down the western Italian coast starting in Portofino and continuing um, through Liguria into Tuscany, farther south into Campania. We stayed around the Amalfi area for a while, Capri, Ischia, um, Positano for a few days usually and then we would cross the Tyrrhenian Sea and go to the Emerald Coast in the northeastern corner of Sardinia and then make our way up into Corsica starting in Bonifacio in the south, working our way to the north to Calvi and then en route to France and we finish our season at uh, a couple of yacht, classic yacht regattas that are around the, the Riviera in September, October. One of the greatest challenges I think I faced uh, when I was on board was given to me during the interview. Uh, the owners said to me that uh, nothing in the menus uh, throughout the whole season should be repeated. Um, the rationale being that since the boat was going to be moving a lot, the cuisine changes in every port of call, whether by region or locality, so the menus and the dishes uh, needed to reflect the indigenous offerings of every place where we were going, which was quite a wonderful challenge. Um, in addition to that, you know, here's this young cook cooking Italian food for Italians in Italy, working out of a small galley while at sea. I also had to cook for the crew. Uh, we were a crew of seven and um, I was a half deckhand, so I had a lot of responsibilities up on deck as well. So it was certainly tall order for my first chef's job. The food shopping was incredible. Um, I mean, the open air markets uh, in the Mediterranean Rim are extraordinary. There's so much available. Um, there were a lot of times where we would be in France in the morning and then move the boat into Italy that afternoon uh, or early the next day. So I could, in one day, sometimes go into the open air market in Antibes and say, and have a lot of bonjour, monsieur. And then later in the day, it would be buona sera, signore. Uh, which was kind of neat to work in two or three languages. But the ingredients uh, were, were wonderful and um, I had a, a really well, in the stores of the yacht, which is you know the pantry, the larder, uh, I was pretty well stocked with all the ingredients I needed for the base of my cooking, which allowed me to find just a couple few fresh ingredients I needed when I got into the markets to fulfill my menus. And a lot of times, um, I didn't even really write the menus till I got into the markets. The market told me, um, what, I, what I needed to make be, from what was available, what was in abundance, what looked great. So it was a really, really interesting way to work and, and a dream for many cooks. So, you know, it took, it took a long time to understand simplicity with food. And as you develop a, your, your palate and, and a, maybe the, the foundation of a repertoire, you know, sometimes the ingredient 
has enough going for it that even doing something to it might take away from it. So you start to put it together and say, maybe I shouldn't be doing anything. And now the food becomes simpler and simpler, and, that, and that's how you really see how this is an ingredient-driven style of cooking. Basically, what you end up having is the Mediterranean diet. And we talk about this paradox a lot, you know, this, you know, this, this French way of being and eating. Why is it so different, and why are they so thin, and, and the Italians and the Spanish? But, you know, to me, there really isn't a paradox. It's more about, you know, it's an attitude, it's a mindset, a lifestyle. And, and I feel that once you conform into that and you're being that way, it, it's really not much of an effort. Um, and, and, it's, it, and it's good for you. As I got a, more proficient in the language, you know, I, I'd eavesdrop on people all the time. And food seemed to be the number one topic. Uh, whether I was uh, on a tram, a, in a bus, in trains, in train stations, um, talking to my coworkers at some of the restaurants where I worked, chefs. You know, it was always about food, you know, what we're going to make, what we, we had, what to look forward to, time of year, a season, a festival, a tradition, um, one person's way of doing something versus another, on and on and on and on and on. Even the owners of the yacht uh, on, on the boat that I worked on, you know, I think they were more concerned with how I chose in the market. You know, for example, you know, the tomatoes that I bought and, and what I was going to do with them depending on their state of ripeness. I think that was more important to them than, you know, they certainly have the capacity to send me to Paris to get something, you know, out of context because they can do that. But um, it wasn't like that. And I started to put the pieces together and realize that, you know, this is a way of eating and an approach to food and life that's for everybody. You know, the table's horizontal. It's not a hierarchy. And so, you know, words like foodie don't really exist. I mean, you might as well say everybody's a foodie. To find out more about David's book and Mediterranean Summer, visit MediterraneanSummer.com.